I may be slightly naive at times and maybe sometimes a little more hopeful than I should be. But I've always thought and I've always been taught that if a company doesn't meet the needs of their customers, they create a unique and rare opportunity for someone else to stand in the gap. So I walk into the comic book shop today, not really looking for anything in particular. I just every now and again, I'll I'll walk in, look for a book, something different, something different to read, something new. And there was a there was a few a few things in there that that piqued my interest. Some books I looked through, you know, once I thumbed through, looked at the panels, they didn't really capture my attention as much as some of the covers did. I've told that story on here already, how covers draw me in. And then I look through the panels and kind of make my decision then. Never fails. I'll go to get on and then I'll get something in my throat or something as soon as I start talking. Okay, so here's my conclusion about the scope of the comic book industry in general. Looking through all of the Marvel comics, because that's where I'm a Marvel guy. That's where I started. And looking at all of the different books that are available for Marvel right now. So first of all, let's let's start with the the X-Men subcategory of Marvel books. My goodness, there are so many different storylines and so many different things going on at the same time that it, it in some ways it can become daunting and you're just like yo where do i start x-men this and x-men legends and x-men gold and x-men blue and x-men this. i'm like yo this is crazy so i heard the argument from eric july couple months ago and he talked about that very thing and he was talking about it from the standpoint of a new comic book collector coming in where do you start and and you know some people responded to their credit and said well you just start anywhere <clears throat> i'm not sure that's what you would want to do and i think that has more to do with the psyche of people than it does with the book itself for instance When I was looking at all of those books, I thought to myself, man, I want I want to be at the beginning. I want to understand what's going on in all of these books. I want to understand how they got to this point. Now, if you pick up later on in any book, you're not going to be at that point. Right. If 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 you let's say take the Ripperverse, since it's the newest IP, if you don't start from the beginning and it's. 20 books in well you're probably gonna have to go back do some get some backstory search for some videos where somebody goes over the backstory or something like that or you just won't know so it's not that you escape that when you have any book but I think when you when you don't have so many long-running story arcs going at the same time I think that that creates an issue. Now, that, that's not something just unique to Marvel. DC has the same problem. So I go over to the DC section and I was like, you know what? I want a good Batman book. I started collecting some of the Batman urban legend books. I have two of them that I still haven't read. One and two shows you how long ago I bought it. I think that started last year or the year before last. I can't remember exactly. Anyway. I have issue one and two from what I understand. It's like one book, a story, some, some are maybe two and three books, you know, following a story, but it's independent individual stories. But then looking on the Batman section, there were so many different Batman comic books. Now I've been a comic book reader since I was 13 years old. I fell off for a little bit, told that story, not going to get back into that. So I understand 
this is a thing, right? There's, there's different story arcs running at the same time sometimes. And you can really pick up anywhere you want to. You can get the backstory. The thing is, will you want to? <clears throat> Something about the human psyche. We like starting from the beginning of something. We like getting in on the beginning of something. We like to be at the start so we can all start together so we can know as much about this thing as the other people over here that know as much about this thing. I really do think there is something to that. This is where I think Eric July has a unique opportunity to capitalize on this in this regard. Now, I'm not saying he's going to avoid having this problem. I don't know. I don't know if it's possible to avoid having this problem. So I'm not going to sing his praises as though it is impossible for him to run into the same snag. But if he can manage to keep this book succinct, like you, you don't have four different story arcs running at the same time. So a person that comes into the comic book shop or goes to your website to look, OK, where should I start? And they have to decide, well, is this story arc where I start or is this story arc in this timeline where I start or is it this one over here? Which one? Which one do I follow? Now, I understand when you become a bigger company like Batman, right? Batman has been around. Uh, I can't remember the exact number of years. The anniversary passed not too long ago. But anyway, when you're a character that's been around for that long, I can understand that you have different story arcs running at the same time. I get it because you have different writers, uh, different artists that want to tell unique stories. I'm not necessarily against that. And this this is not necessarily me speaking against that. But this is where I'm saying the Ripperverse has a unique opportunity and that unique opportunity is to capitalize on something, I would say, partly psychologically that some of these other comic book companies. I'm not going to say they don't know, but that they haven't been able to capitalize on. They've been around too long and the, the problems that they face can't be necessarily fixed overnight. You would have to rein in some of these story arcs and start back over with one overriding story arc canceling everything else just so a, a fan or a newcomer can get in start with a book and follow it and this is where eric july has a unique opportunity if he is able to keep the ripperverse from having too many independent story arcs of this of the same character so i'm not saying you know, you can't have different comic book characters, different teams and different books going. That's not what I'm saying. Like if he had I sum this story arc and then this other story arc of I sum and this other story arc of I sum three more story arcs of I sum all going at the same time. And I'm a newcomer and I walk into the comic book shop, bro. I don't even know where to start. Which one do I grab? What if I can't make a decision? Not everybody's like me, and I understand that. I'm, I'm not saying I'm the standard, but when I walked into the comic book shop today, I walked out empty handed. Now, I don't always I'm not saying this is always an issue, but it really did wear on me. I was like, man, I don't like what do I follow? Where do, where do I I don't do I pick up this one? That one looks OK, but do I pick up this one? And I went over to Batman. Do I pick up this Batman or that Batman? And ultimately, I was just like, you know what? I just don't want to pick anything up. Now, sometimes Marvel and DC will have a a storyline that involves multiple characters that I enjoy and I like following, like War of the Realms. If you have not read War of the Realms for Marvel, that's that's a pretty good series right there. I thoroughly enjoyed reading that. Some people didn't. I enjoyed it. The Jane Foster Thor uh, run. I enjoyed that. Some people didn't enjoy that. They thought it was pandering. They thought it was wokeness. I don't necessarily agree. I think the book was actually very well written and very well drawn. All of, all the books that I haven't read. But those are unique situations where I know the reason those storylines excited me so much, like War of the Realms. 
I, I had been waiting for months before War of the Realms had ever dropped. I'd already got news. I'd seen some different things coming about. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to get on this, get in on this from the ground floor. I was able to get in on it and buy all of the relevant issues. Now, there was there were subplots going on in different Marvel comics. If you, if you read comic books, you, you know what I'm talking about. But the main War of the Realms story arc, I was able to buy every single book individually and read all the way through the whole story. And I loved it. There's something about being able to follow a story all the way through that is really exciting. There's something to be said for that. I don't know what it is exactly. I cannot tell you what it is exactly. I'm not saying that comic book companies have to follow that model. But I think a comic a comic book company that can follow that model that that model and have a story that fans can just follow because you you can be 30 issues in. If, if it's only one story arc, I could probably go back four or five issues within a reason and pick up and see what's going on because as the story's flowing some things are connected some things are not connected some things are a start of a new story within within this arc that allows you to get in more uh more easily but when you have too many different things going on at the same time I'm telling you, because I'm I'm thinking of myself as a as a veteran comic book reader. I'm like, if if this kind of I'm not going to say it gave me anxiety, but I was like, yo, I don't there's too much to choose from. I don't know where to start. I don't know which one of these stories I'm going to be interested in. So let me just hold off on that. Go look some stuff up at home and come back and buy. And I may not go back and buy customers lost if I went in. <clears throat> And and knew nothing about the Ripperverse and looked on the aisle and they had a Ripperverse comic. I would have said to myself, huh, what is this Ripperverse? Any other? Com- well, this is it. This one. I picked it up immediately. Mm, sold. I'm buying it. That's the, the Batman One Dark Knight series. When I first saw the book, I was like, oh, book one, One Dark Knight. OK, I'll pick this up. This is something different. New new story arc. I'll I'll pick it up and follow it. Now. Could I have done that with any of the other story arcs in there? That same thing, just pick one and start there. Yeah, I could have done that. And I understand that I'm not necessarily contradicting myself with that. What I'm saying is. When you have that many story arcs running at the same time, I think to some degree, some customers like myself are taken aback a little bit. And it's like, man, it's it's too cloudy. There's too much going on at the same time that needs to be cleaned up. Now, I felt like this for a while before I ever heard Eric July say anything about it or mention it <clears throat> before the Ripperverse was even or before I knew the Ripperverse was a thing, I had said that I was like, man, there's too much going on. And this this reminds me, and I've said this before, I think I, I compared it before and I, I, I kind of hate to compare it to this, but it's the only thing I can compare it to because it happened within my lifetime. The beginning of Image Comics, because I kept thinking I was like, yo, what what made Image Comics so appealing to me? Part of it was the artists. They had all my favorite artists. Jim Lee, Brett Booth, Todd McFarlane, Mark Silverstreet, um, uh, Scott Williams. I think Scott Williams primarily does ink work. But all the artists that I like, all the artists that I love, all the artists that I want to see their work. So this is what I'm saying. When that happened... When Image Comics started, I could start from the beginning. There wasn't a bunch of different stories going on and I didn't know, Okay, well, this is a new team. Do I start in this team book or this team book or this team book over there? They were new. Even if even if I even if I wasn't caught up on every single issue, I could pick up whatever issue the comic book store had there. And if if I was interested and if I wanted to know what happened before, I could go back and pick that up. 
when you have so many story arcs going at the same time, you don't know, okay, do I want to start on this story arc or this story arc? Which one tells the story of the team? Do I find out about the team in this one? Do I find out their origin in this one? Is this the main arc? Is that the main arc? Yo, that's cluttered. Right now, the Marvel and the DC space is cluttered. And I can see the problem with the constant reboots. It is my personal opinion that DC's New 52 was probably one of the best reboots they had. And they should have just stuck with that. At least for a longer amount of time. It seems like that was scrapped too quickly. And then they went with, I think Rebirth came after that, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken. Correct me in the comments if you know. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that is the best recipe to keep the attention of fans. I'm not saying you you I'm not saying that you have to cater to all of the different needs and desires of every single fan individually because you can't please everybody and I understand that. Nor am I implying that I believe these companies have to please everyone. But I do believe they they run the risk of maybe losing new people. So this is what this is what I notice. I've been going online, looking up uh just Ripperverse in general, hashtag Ripperverse, I some. I I want to know what people are saying, even people that don't like it. And and most of the critiques, not all of them, but most of the critiques I've read are actually fair critiques. Which is, which is good. It, it seems like the comic book space is actually being fair. Now, you have your outliers that just don't like Eric July, so they're going to attack the comic just for the sake of attacking it. You definitely have that. I don't think you can get away from that. What I've noticed in a lot of people, I'm, and I'm reading this a lot, first comic book I ever bought, first comic book I ever bought. Here's another thing. There's a lot of people that I'm I'm reading and they're like, yeah, I haven't collected comics in years. This is the first book I've bought since this first book I've bought since that. And a common theme, people are excited to be able to start with something new and be able to keep up. So I'm like, OK, it's not just me. It is not just me. This is an actual thing. So what I'm saying is this is a golden opportunity. I think. Time sometimes can be your friend when skill won't now that that's not to say that this book is not skillfully done because it is the storyline is good the colors are good the art is good the book has good quality but i think time was more on eric's side than anything and because the comic book space is in a certain condition it was primed for somebody like this to come along and i do believe along with his status, but I do believe his book has done very well because people are generally interested in starting out with something new and being able to keep up. Here's what I'm confident in. I'm confident that if I missed two or three I some books, I could probably easily catch up and it wouldn't be an issue. I think I could probably miss 20 and still be able to catch up and it wouldn't be an issue because I have one story arc to follow. Not 10, not 12, not 30. And I really do think that's a problem within the comic book industry.